Your energetic rhythms show you exactly when to rest and when to take action. So you don't have to overthink life and work. Yet, if you disregard even one phase of these rhythms, burnout or feeling scattered or even perpetually stuck in life is bound to happen. And the second phase of your energetic rhythm cycle is often where those feelings originate. Welcome to Health, Harmony, and Happiness with Kathy. I'm your host, Kathy Stricker. I'm a state patrol wife, mama to three lively kiddos, a yoga teacher, certified NLP coach, and an energetic rhythms expert. As an energetic rhythms coach, I help action-taking women use their body's rhythms and the moon's cycle to optimize productivity and avoid burnout without letting their desire to remain in control alter their focus. And this podcast is all about doing just that and perhaps a bit more so that you can create your own path to health, harmony, and happiness. So come along with me and may this episode serve as a nudge to discover tools that could help you on your path towards more intentional living. Enjoy the show. Hey, friends. Welcome to the show. Welcome to episode 53 of the Health, Harmony, and Happiness with Kathy podcast. I am so glad to be here today. Hey, I'll tell you what, it is a waxing moon, so that means that energy is growing. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later in the episode, because This series of episodes that we are moving through over the next few weeks is all about your energetic rhythms cycle and the different phases that make that cycle up, I guess. There are four phases. Last week, we talked about phase one, and this week, we're going to talk about phase two, which is all about preparation and growth. So last week, we talked about intention setting primarily, right? But I want to also mention to you that That's not the only component that makes up the first phase of your energetic rhythms. There's also some other things, and I kind of mentioned them last week, but I just want to refresh your memory so that you, um, so that it kind of puts you in the right mindset as well as we're moving through this. So the first phase of your energetic rhythm cycle is yes, about intention setting, but it is also about rest, surrender, and acceptance. Okay. Um, rest being that we need to take the time in our lives to actually have downtime without guilt, right? To be still and to understand that it's that rest phase that actually allows us to um, use the energy that we do have once we get it back more effectively, more efficiently. So rest also encompasses surrender, It encompasses allowing life to flow as it naturally needs to, right? Rather than fighting against it, it allows for acceptance, right? So surrender, acceptance, taking the time to be still. Those are all crucial components of that first phase. Now, that first phase can last um, anywhere from a few days to an entire week, but that downtime is absolutely critical. It allows you to recharge, right? It allows you to reset your batteries, um, to recharge your battery so it's full, and then use that energy to do great things, right? To do absolutely wonderful things. And um, we talked only about intention setting or pretty much only about intention setting because that's a crucial part of it as well. When you have that downtime, it's a time to start to focus your attention inward and um and just begin to decide how you want to move forward over the next few weeks with your cycle, the next four weeks or so. So I kind of break up the cycle um, in a four-week cycle. It's not that way for everybody because everybody's cycle length may be a little bit different, um, varying maybe by just a few days or so, right? But in an ideal world, if you were to break up the cycle with one week being Um, that first phase, the next week being the second phase and so forth, then it makes it nice and neat. (laughs) 
(laughs) Now I've learned over the past few years, as I've done this work with my energetic rhythms, that it's not always that neat. (laughs) Okay. This is where you learn to tune into your inner guidance. And this is where, um, Sometimes it might be different one cycle to the next, but overall there is a general pattern. So I've learned that um, most of the time my phase one lasts maybe only three to five days and then I move on to the next phase because my body is ready. My energy is ready to move on. For you, it might not be until after day seven or day eight, but you don't have to be rigid with it. That's the thing. Like allow yourself a little bit of grace here. You don't have to be completely rigid with when the first cycle or when the first phase ends, when the second phase ends and so forth. Um, I've done that just so you know, because that's uh, traditionally been my personality to be a little bit more rigid and disciplined with things. And as I've practiced and um, expanded on all of this learning in my life and just been curious with it, I've learned that it's not always going to be in a nice, neat, tidy box. And that's okay, right? It's perfectly wonderful. And I've learned what works for me now. And so I want you to be able to learn what works for you as well. But the first thing that you have to do in order to do that is begin to track your energetic rhythms. And I've got the daily rhythms tracker available that you can do that with. There's a link in the show notes, head out there and grab that. If you haven't, if you have questions on that, when you're using it, please drop me an email, send me a message. I'm happy to answer those. And I'm happy to walk you through how to use that. And hopefully it will give you beautiful insights on the workings of your own innate rhythms as well as the moon's rhythms so that um, so that you can begin to anticipate how your energy is going to look. You can begin to anticipate those days when you know you're going to have less energy and when you're in each phase of your energetic rhythm cycle. So I just wanted to remind you of that, that phase one is not only about intention setting, but it's also about rest, surrender, and acceptance, right? You set intentions so that your actions align with the experience you want to have and create in life. And part of that also means that you have to refresh and recharge. And we do that through the practice of surrendering, through the practice of acceptance, through the practice of resting, um, flowing with what happens in life instead of trying to resist it, allowing whatever happens in life to be expansive instead of contractive. So if you missed last week's episode, head on back to episode 52 and take a listen. And if you haven't set your intentions yet, then grab that intention setting worksheet and set your intentions for the upcoming month. Um, There's a printable worksheet. I will link to it again in the show notes and um, you can start there or you can simply start with setting some intentions in your journal. Totally up to you. But Every project you encounter can be divided up into these four phases of your energetic rhythm cycle, right? And each month you can begin to plan your energy around these phases once you have an idea of what those energetic rhythms are. So download the daily rhythms tracker, begin to get an idea of what those phases are for your own body, for your own self. And this week, we move into talking about phase two. And phase two is all about preparation and growth. And the exciting thing about it, exciting, not so exciting, is that it's a transition. (laughs) And um, you might have heard me say before that transitions aren't always the most pleasant thing to go through, right? We're kind of grieving or mourning what has been and also trying to get ourselves excited about what's to come. So transitions can be a tricky thing unless you begin to believe that transitions are easy. <laughs> and you might have heard me say also with um, my yoga students, one of the one of the affirmations that I've used for a long time is, Transitions are easy for me. I move through transitions easily and effortlessly. And when we start to repeat that in our brain, it translates off the mat also into life. And quite honestly, we go through so many transitions in life that um, that sooner or later, don't you think we need to, they need to start getting easier? So we got to start believing that. And that starts with mindset work. But that's, you know, 
for another time. Let's let's talk about phase two and just the fact that it is a transition, okay? The whole phase is about transitioning from this downtime into like the full work, the full thriving work where you're putting everything out there, you're doing all of the things to um, to like really produce whatever it is you want to produce, whether that's results, whether that's like uh, helping your child learn to sleep through the night, whether that is um, painting your house, whatever it may be, you've got to move from the intention setting phase into the actually doing and taking action phase. And that messy middle, my friends, is what we're talking about today. (laughs) It is all right here in the preparation and growth phase. Okay, now this aligns um, with the waxing moon. If you're thinking of the lunar cycle, It aligns with the waxing moon, which when this episode airs, we will be in that waxing moon phase. And that usually actually starts from about day three of the lunar cycle until the peak of energy around the full moon. And there's a, there's some gray area around there too. But, um, once you begin to start seeing the moon again, it's, it's honestly a waxing moon. Like the day after it's a new moon, it moves into a waxing (laughs) phase, Um, But we start to see it around day two, two and a half, three, something like that. And um, that's also amazingly when we start to feel that growing energy and we begin to feel the growing energy. Now, if you consider your menstrual cycle or your innate cycle, um, this is often after the first three to seven days of your cycle, depending on how you feel. And this is where you have to know your own body's rhythms in order to know um, what aligns most with you and what works best for you. If you consider it on a week to week energetic rhythm cycle, like, um, or if you consider that each phase is a week rather, kind of like I mentioned in the beginning, then this would be like days eight to 14 if you're running on a 28 day cycle. So this is what I would consider the follicular phase of the menstrual cycle. Okay. So that's how it aligns with uh, the lunar world or with with the sciencey world, as well as with your innate rhythms. So some of the characteristics of this phase, this second phase, are um, growing energy, as you've heard me say, and there is also, which which leads to the fact that there may be a tendency or you may have a tendency to over plan or become overly ambitious. (laughs) So those of you with your to-do lists out there... uh, do a brain dump at this time, get everything out of your brain and then actually look at it realistically and, and cross off the things that maybe you're not really going to get done. You can leave those on the want to do someday list or on the horizon list, but, um, there is a tendency to over plan and to become overly ambitious during this, during this phase. So, um, I'll just leave that as a word of caution for you, but that's some of the energy that you feel. Some of the other characteristics of this phase are that it's a great time to brainstorm because you have all those ideas. Do that brain dump. Get those ideas going. It's a time to create, to initiate, to begin to um, to begin to dream up what you want a project to look like, what you want um, to have in your life, right? What you want those intentions that you set to actually look like. You likely have a more positive outlook during this time. And just there's this this energy of having a faith that it will all work out. Oh yeah, I can do that. I can take that on. I can do that. There's this underlying faith that we just carry with this positive outlook when we move into this phase of the energetic rhythm cycle. Um, you're, it's, it's movement in the direction that you want to go. You begin taking the initial steps and making plans. excuse me. Um, but like I said, it's a transition friends. So there is a lot of unknowns in this phase and that is where our first caution comes in or our second caution. Cause I already, um, I already cautioned you about the overly ambitious thing, but it also might make you feel very scattered because it's a transition for one. And because there's so many things that you want to do that projects aren't necessarily getting done. You're like getting started with a lot of things, but maybe not completing them. So it can lead to you feeling like you're being pulled in a lot of directions. It can lead to you feeling like you're very scattered. And um, and that can be a frustrating thing. And that can be, can be something that leads to burnout. It can be something that um, just 
makes people feel ah crazy all the time, right? We're going to get to how to overcome that in just a little bit or, or some little um, tidbits, I guess, or nudges on what you can do to, to begin to combat that. But like I said in the beginning, the length of this phase is um, it's, it's kind of dependent on the project, um, but it basically goes until the project is actually released out into the world or until action starts getting taken on it or it starts getting done, right? So some examples of being in this phase two of uh, your energetic rhythm cycle would be buying paint um, before you before you paint something. And the reason I bring that up is because um, and maybe the buying paint is actually your intention, right? Maybe that's the actual intention. Um, no, I would say I'm going to, I'm going to rescind that and I'm going to go back. (laughs) It's, it's phase two. I was, my inner guidance was right. The first time I wrote this, um, it's the buying of the paint in preparation for painting, whatever it is that you're doing. And I will just tell you that this is what I experienced, um, just recently because I had to paint around the new windows that we got at the studio. And so that was my taking action, right? But I had to buy the paint first. Um, buying paint. I think I talked about this in a Facebook live a while ago too, because it must've been back, must've been back in the spring when I was painting my kitchen. Um, but that is, that's that phase two, uh, buying a yoga mat or workout clothes. That's just telling yourself that that's in preparation for what's to come next, that you're intending to actually begin your yoga practice. You're intending to actually begin to move intentionally. Um, This uh, example of phase two could also look like outlining a project. So, you know, you have something that you want to get done. You know, you want, like when I'm writing the podcast, um, when I'm writing a podcast episode, I know I've got the concept or the idea in my brain. I put it out there. Those are maybe that's the intention or that's the first phase. The second phase that I move through with it is to outline it, to actually put my thoughts onto paper so that I can then record the episode, right? Um, and maybe another thing would be contacting someone to do the work for you, which could be a novel idea or a novel concept for some of you out there because, um, you likely are a do it all person and want to just be able to do that. But honestly, making the effort to contact someone to help you with the project or even delegating it to someone else, that's part of this phase as well. That's part of what helps you stay focused too, is that you're inviting other people into the process with you and you're just beginning to take those initial steps. And that's okay to do. That's that's a wonderful thing to do. So maybe it's... um contacting someone to do the work for you or to even get estimates for the project. Like you're gathering the initial information that you need. You guys can see where I'm going with this, right? Like you can pinpoint things in your life where you know, oh yeah, that's phase two of my energetic rhythm cycle. That's kind of when I want to do that. And the reason I tell you this is because then you can start to align those actions with when you're actually in that phase of your energetic rhythms cycle right? You can begin to look at, okay, I know that I'm going to want to get estimates for new blinds, right? When would be a good time to actually put that on my calendar to do that? Because it doesn't need to be like, it doesn't need to be just one more thing to do, but let's align it with um, the time that your energy is actually wanting to do those sorts of things and put it on your calendar for when you're in your phase two of your energetic rhythms, right? So I mentioned that there are some challenges and I've kind of picked out a two, I picked out two of those and I already mentioned them to you, but there are actually really three challenges that um, you might encounter during this phase of your energetic rhythms cycle. There, these challenges are really the greatest opportunity or potential, potential for you to work on yourself, for you to begin to do the thought work, for you to begin to do um, the coaching. Like maybe these are things that you bring um, to me as your coach, if you're a client of mine, and we would then begin to work through how to overcome them, right? How to um, reframe them, how to move in a different way, how to get to where you want to be instead of where you are. So it's the greatest opportunity or for, or for, I can't talk right now, apparently. It's the greatest opportunity or potential 
to work on yourself. These are the challenges and how to overcome them. So the first one is um, that you overcommit or you get too ambitious. And I mentioned that before, right? But how do you overcome that? How do you uh, move away from that? Well, one of the things you can do is set smart goals based on your intentions. And I talked about that a little bit in last week's episode too. <clears throat> but smart goals are um, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And then you don't deviate from those goals <laughs> because you have set them specifically to help you um, move towards that intention. You simply begin to use your goals as the um, the jumping off block, I guess, for which actions you're going to take. The other thing you can do to combat this overly ambitious tendency is to know and explore your limits. You get to know your inner guidance enough that when something is a yes, because it's in alignment with your highest good, you know that yes. And you also know the yes that's coming from you because you just really want it in the moment. And that yes may not be your inner guidance. You also get used to saying no when something is, in an ali- is not in alignment with your highest good. So you can listen to your inner guidance or listen when your inner guidance is saying no and overrule the should that might want to come out as a yes, right? So sometimes our shoulds end up being yeses, but they're really shoulds. And that's your inner critic. That's your inner protector trying to keep you safe, trying to keep you comfortable. But when you learn how to say no to something, you avoid that overcommitting tendency. You um, avoid that, that, that tendency to get too ambitious in this phase. Yeah. So first challenge is overcommitting or getting too ambitious, right? And those are some ways to, to combat that. Set smart goals, know your limits. And sometimes that knowing your limits has to come from actually talking it through with someone else, from actually working with a coach, from actually working with someone who can help you discover your inner guidance, can help you discover maybe what's in alignment with your highest good and what isn't. And your intentions will also lead you to that, that alignment with your highest good. So it's just kind of getting to know yourself even a little bit more than you already do. The second challenge that comes up in this phase of your energetic rhythms is that scattered, unfocused feeling. You've all been there. I know you have because I've been there as well. Um, during this phase, we, you might have a tendency to want to do all the things because you have energy and because uh, because you feel like you're capable of doing all the things. And, oh, squirrel, you know, like it, it, you get into that mentality um, because there is so much energy and positivity during this phase. So we have a tendency to become even more scattered and unfocused. And I'll tell you what, this is one of the ways that um, that we, we burn out or we get stuck, um, especially getting stuck because... Uh, because you're all over the place and you're not really taking aligned action on things that actually matter. So in order to combat this scattered or unfocused feeling, you have to make sure that you first set intentions and then refer back to them throughout the entire month. I know that seems like a little extra work, but if you just post them next to your desk or next to someplace where you're going to see them every day or write them on your mirror, something like that, you're going to see them and you're going to remember what it is you have intentions for this month, this cycle. Your intentions may not change from cycle to cycle. Like they may stay the same for months at a time. Trust me, been there, done that, still there. I do that a lot, but it always reminds me that I'm moving towards or moving in the direction of these things that I, I, I want in my life. And that's why I say set no more than one to three intentions. No more, because otherwise it overwhelms and it creates more scattered feelings and more unfocused feelings. So like just choose one to three and work towards them. Uh, let's see here. Other ways to, um, to combat that scattered or unfocused sense that might come about during this phase is 
take the time to be more clear on scheduling yourself or on time blocking during this time so that you're scheduling in time on your calendar to actually work on the specific things that are going to be in alignment with your intentions that are going to be in alignment with your goals, right? Like actually put those on your calendar because if not, you'll get pulled in a million different directions. <laughs> you literally will. You'll, you'll, somebody will ask you to do something else and, oh yeah, I can do that. I have the time to do that. Yet you already committed to doing this other thing, but you didn't put it on your calendar. So it's not probably happening. So just be really mindful about putting things on your calendar and scheduling time for them. And then once they are in your calendar, maybe you're you're doing something like the Pomodoro method um, to, to stay focused during them. So you set a 25 minutes of work and five minutes of break um, and just continue to work through that. If you don't know what the Pomodoro method is, do a quick Google search of it. You'll figure it out. The next thing is like, do your best work first thing in the morning. So this is just another tip or technique to help you stay focused. Do I don't, I don't even remember what remember what book I was reading, but um, essentially there have been studies done. Oh, it must have been like essentialism, I think. Anyway, it's a great book. Uh, I'll link to that in the show notes as well. <laughs> but um, they've done numerous studies that we do our best work. Uh, high end athletes, when studied did their best work first thing in the morning and in 60 to 90 minute segments, basically, um, with short breaks in the middle of that 60 to 90 minute, 60 to 90 minute segment. So you could essentially use the Pomodoro method and for 60 to 90 minutes in your, in your morning and do your absolute best work or the work on the most important project, um, first, because, that's going to get you the farthest ahead. That's going to get you the most results, the, the biggest return on your investment, right? But I'm going to tell you that this might not be an actual um, doing project. Like maybe this first thing in the morning work also includes the time that you spend on your self-care so that you can remain better focused throughout the day. Maybe it's doing your yoga practice first thing so that the rest of the day you're completely focused and you're ready to go, right? Because you know that that mind-body connection is actually going to advance you uh, throughout the day. That's going to help you remain focused on the other things. So just a little, just a little tidbit in there. Um, do your best work first thing in the morning, the work that is uh, the most important for getting the highest return on investment. Um, that's, that's one way to stay, to combat this scattered or unfocused feeling. And then the last thing is to practice mindfulness and just mindfulness alone will help you, uh, combat that scattered, unfocused feeling. And, and honestly, mindfulness is just simply paying attention to what's happening right now in this moment. It's not about getting something right or wrong. It's just practice and it's practicing a loving and kind way of looking at your experience in this present moment. So maybe as you're working through your your morning work, you're taking breaks, those five minute breaks in your Pomodoro method to um, maybe just take one to two minutes of uh, noticing your surroundings with all five senses, right? Or maybe it's taking a few minutes to just do some deep breathing and, and center yourself back in with yourself. Whatever it is, uh, mindfulness is the third way to kind of overcome that scattered or unfocused feeling that might come with phase two. And the third challenge that happens in phase two of the energetic rhythm cycle is that you feel stuck in motion. Now, I have an entire podcast on this, so I'm not going to go in depth on this, but um, you may have a tendency to get stuck in just taking action on all the small little things that need to happen in life instead of actually doing the things on the big projects. And like I just said, doing the big things first, that's one way to avoid this feeling of being stuck in motion. Um, but this is where those of you out there who are self-reliant, do-it-yourself gals and, ga and guys often struggle. Um, you ignore the fact that delegation is good and that can often get you stuck. Okay, so um, you try to do all the things, all the little things even, and that gets you stuck in motion. It gets you stuck in this place of um, doing those small things and not actually into the big, important taking action things. So um, maybe combating this stuck in motion um, looks like also doing some coaching with yourself 
whether that's with a coach or with yourself, around what your fears are of actually taking action on the big thing. Maybe what would it look like to take action on the big thing that you want done? Or what are the possible next steps that could happen? All you need to do is shine the light six feet in front of you and ask, what's the next thing I need to do to move forward? It doesn't have to be the end result, just the next thing. And I go in depth on this um, concept in episode 50. So it's just a couple episodes ago, but episode 50 of the podcast, and it's called Stuck in Motion. And that's, that's, the, that's the challenge to overcome, but that often happens in phase two of your energetic rhythm cycle. So as we wrap this episode up, oh my goodness, friends, I have gone much longer than I actually intended to. I apologize for that. But as we wrap this episode up, just some things to be aware of. Um, your growing energy in phase two of your energetic rhythm cycle or in the preparation and growth phase means that it's often a catalyst to get things started, which is a good thing, right? It's huge. It's taking the first step. It's getting the ball rolling because your creative juices actually start flowing, which is a beautiful thing. So use this time of your energetic rhythm cycle to your benefit and start taking action on the big things on the big things in how you want to be living your life. When you look at the big picture, um, it's crucial that you set intentions first so that you can stay focused when this energy in phase two arrives. If you miss out on that part of the cycle, if you miss out on the intention setting part of the cycle, you're definitely going to feel scattered in phase two. So be sure that you have done that. Remember that your energetic rhythms show you exactly when to rest and when to take action so you don't have to overthink life and work, right? Yet if you disregard even one phase of those rhythms, burnout, feeling scattered, or even perpetually stuck in life is definitely bound to happen, yeah? You get what I'm, what I'm putting down? Okay, friends, that's all I've got today. Um, you know... If you liked what you heard in this episode, uh, share it. Take a screenshot of the podcast and share it on social media. Share it on Facebook or on Instagram and tag me if you want. I would love that. And if you're not on social media, before you leave this episode, before you leave this podcast, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, would you be so kind as to leave a rating or review? That's how this podcast gets seen by more people. That's how um, we share this message of intentionality with others. And I would be so grateful to you if you did that. Otherwise, next week, we are moving on to phase three of the energetic rhythm cycle. And that is all about doing the intentional work and thriving in it. So look forward to that. And until then... I'm Kathy Stricker, and you've been listening to Health, Harmony, and Happiness with Kathy. Cheers to cultivating your own version of health, harmony, and happiness in your life.